On today's show, Giannis is going to be working out with Hakeem. Is this something to get excited about? And look, we've been doing a lot of conversation about Giannis over the last few weeks with some of the comments that he's made. Uh, this prompted reporters to ask Adrian Griffin a whole bunch of questions that maybe he didn't want to answer at this point in his coaching tenure with Milwaukee. So is this putting him under more pressure? And how should Adrian Griffin feel about this? Uh, on the positive sides, Middleton and Giannis are going to be ready for camp, though. So there's plenty to get through on today's show. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Bucks, your daily Milwaukee Bucks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Bucks. My name is Kane Pittman. You can see and hear me on this show and find my work over at ESPN and alongside me, the founder of brewhoop.com and longtime voice of the podcast, Frank Madden, for today's episode that is brought to you by Jace Medical, a new sponsor of the show. Empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics that treat 50-plus infections. Get yours today at jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. And as always, we thank everyone for making Locked On Bucks your first watch or first listen to get your day started. And continues to be a busy period for the Bucks. So we appreciate the support. Drop a like, a comment, subscribe, rate, review, do all those things that are free to do and uh, helps the show continue to build. And we want to get some new listeners and new contributors to the show uh, as the regular season counts down. I saw an Instagram post just a few minutes ago. And look, let's face it. You never know these days whether an Instagram post is new or it's old, but it was a picture of the Nassus and it said 43 days till the regular season. So is that correct today? I don't really know right now, but it makes me excited. It's 43 or less. I think it's around the mark. Uh, so it's not far away. So we're going to continue to build up on Locked On Bucks. Uh, so the honest news continues. Uh, as we discussed in the previous pod, and we don't want to back over the same conversations we've had. Everyone knows what Giannis has said. He wants to win. Pretty simple stuff. Uh, one of the nuggets that did come out is Giannis is doing a, a few different media appearances, did a podcast for the first time in his life, as he said. Uh, anyway, one of the news bits that came out of this, uh, Giannis is going to be doing some working out, or he has done some working out with uh, Hakeem. Now, this is naturally, obviously, a grade of the game. It gets people a little bit excited. And I don't want people to predict what you're going to say to this, Frank, but your reactions already tell me. We haven't discussed it. When you hear that, do you get excited? Do you care at all? Do you think this is news? Well, um, oh boy. I, I, I look, I looked this back up. So back in 2015, uh, I did a kind of joke post for Brew Hoop. This is so long ago. This is when I was still writing about basketball, uh, in which I, I came up with a media day bingo card, um, to follow along with the cliches that you tend to hear at NBA media day, right? We've, we've, I mean, if you followed the sport long enough, you know the kind of you know optimistic hope springs eternal type stuff that uh, that comes up at media day. And one of the boards, one of the boards, uh, one of the or one of the you know little squares was worked out with Hakeem, and another uh, square was did yoga with Hakeem. That's like the next level thing. If you if you're doing you know next level, st- I mean just doing dream shakes. I mean that's been done. Dwight Howard did dream shakes, you know, practices post moves with Hakeem. If you start doing the yoga, that's like the next level stuff, you know, whatever. Um, so I've had I have a history of sort of making fun of <laughs> of the idea of working out with Hakeem. I'd have to look up what the complete list is of of guys that have worked out with Hakeem uh during summers but i feel like there was a stretch there it hasn't really i don't think it's i don't know if it's happened recently so much um but there was a period there where it was like kind of a thing for you know nba young nba big men to you know do the thing where you hang out with akeem for a week or something and you know chat about the game and i i I always remember dwight howard because that one again kind of fed my cynicism the most because it's like you know did dwight howard suddenly become a you know refined skill guy post guy um not so much but uh, look, having another perspective, um, especially from a guy that uh, had, again, you know, uh, perhaps one of the most refined post games um, in the history of the sport. Unfortunately, even though my wife is a Rockets fan and I now have a soft spot for the Rockets, in the 90s, I was fervently anti Rockets because I was a David Robinson, San Antonio Spurs fan. Uh, so I, I did not get to enjoy any any of Akeem's artistic stylings. Uh, but uh, but hey, yeah, Giannis, if you want to go spend some time with Akeem, obviously 
a, a cool story just given Giannis's Nigerian heritage and, and Akeem obviously um, being the greatest African basketball player of all time. Sorry, Steve Nash. Uh, <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if Steve Nash is really qualifying that. He's born in South Africa, right? But uh, I think we all think of him as Canadian. But um, but yeah, Akeem, obviously phenomenal player. And uh, I don't know. I mean, again, Akeem, highly skilled guy, had great touch from the mid-range. We've obviously talked a lot about how that was something that Giannis had made strides in. And then last year, there was a, a regression, especially in the first half of the season. Ironically, after he hurt his wrist he actually got much better uh on mid-range jumpers as well as on kind of all the shots in the floater range so um so hopefully that was kind of some noise and uh i don't know again with this kind of stuff confidence is part of it uh and so again maybe just some inspiration working out with with a great who maybe provides you know some some helpful tips and pointers and just makes him feel confident in it. Because I think that's one thing we've seen with, with Giannis is like, there's certain t- shots that he's taken at certain parts of his career. He'll like go through stretches where he'll, you know, he'll take the one legged fadeaway like a few times in the span of a week or two, or, you know, he'll show off some hook shots over the course of a week or two, but then these things kind of like wax and wane and they disappear for a while or, you know, they be kind of come, become insistent, become inconsistent. So sure. Why not? It's uh, it's September Kane. Work out with the we work out with the team. I'm not gonna expect you know any sort of revolution in terms of Giannis's game and uh, becoming you know, the next Akeem in terms of uh, post moves. But um, he also doesn't need Akeem's post moves because uh, he does a lot of stuff that even Akeem can't do. So sure, work out with Akeem, great. Um, and uh, who knows? Maybe maybe some of that will bleed over into what we see on the court this year. I do wonder, to your point, that yes, certainly throughout his career, he's been able to do a bunch of things that Hakeem couldn't do. But I do wonder if Giannis looks at himself and says, okay, well, once I do get to 32, 33, 34, am I going to be able to do those things? And if I can't, what does that mean for me? So, yeah, I don't see this as something where he's going to turn around. I know there was some stuff on Twitter, like there was one still photo and everyone's like, oh, my goodness. I mean, that's ridiculous. He's not going to come in and be you know, uh, dream shaking everyone out of their boots like all season long and become one of the greatest post players of all time. That's not going to happen. But maybe the idea of how it helped him as a player play to a, a much uh, advanced stage and how long he stayed uh, in the league, maybe that's something that Giannis is looking at, which I think we've all discussed is something that he's going to have to do moving forward at some point, which is why we've looked at the one-legged fadeaway that you've mentioned, but even just walking into those mid-range jump shots, the hook shot, all those types of things. So... Yeah, maybe he gets some advice. Maybe he's looking at his future, which uh, wouldn't really surprise anyone because we have seen in different ways Giannis generally be someone that continues to improve. So I don't think anyone's sitting back and thinking that uh, he's happy with where he's at. Clearly, the theme of the quotes is that he wants to continue to win. He wants to continue to get better and he wants to be with a franchise that's going to help him do that. So, yeah, I don't don't think it's going to be life-changing this year. If you're if you're a Bucks fan, but I think it's a cool uh, summer note anyway, particularly because he also did reference the fact again uh, the reasons why he doesn't like to play or practice with other NBA players. So if you want to uh, spend some time with one of the greats, uh, I think that's pretty cool. We haven't spoken a lot about Adrian Griffin. And one, I do want- one one just yeah, before we before we drop that. So a, a list of an, an incomplete list of players that Akeem has worked out with: <laughs> LeBron James. Oh, okay. Uh, Amari. Stoudemire, pretty good. Uh, I mentioned Dwight Howard. Uh, and then some guys that maybe, um, you know, may, maybe it didn't result in any dramatic change in, in, in who they were. JaVale McGee. Uh, and a, uh, another Buck, <laughs> quote-unquote Buck, uh, Buck Summer League legend Taco Fall, also apparently uh, has, has okay. worked out with, uh, with Akeem. So, uh, you know, mixed bag. But uh, I think probably especially for Giannis, you know, a guy in the same interview and, and um, so Ross Geiger who used to work for the Bucks. And, you know, I think some people, certainly people who are very familiar with Giannis's history, you know, Ross was like literally, you know, two peas in a pod with Giannis when Giannis first came into the league. Ross like taught him how to drive a car, I think did more of the work than uh, John Horst, even though John Horst somehow sometimes gets uh, lumped in with with teaching Giannis to drive. So, um, so Ross and Giannis have a very long history of of being friends. And Giannis came on uh, on Ross's podcast, um, the Forty Eight Minutes podcast, the other day. So it, I, I tweeted out the link. Definitely worth a listen. Um, some funny stories, and uh, you know, some I would say generally some reiteration of some of the themes that.
have have honed in on. But uh, anyway, speaking of Giannis comments and fallouts for, for the fallout for others, can I think you were about to get into uh, what it's been meant for Adrian Griffin? Yeah, it's interesting because we spoke about uh, the the general idea of having a new coach, which is clearly new uh, in Milwaukee. But I think overall, would a new coach rather come to a, a low pressure environment or an extreme pressure environment, which maybe this is in Milwaukee? So I want to ask you about that next after we talk about. Uh, Jace Medical that I already mentioned uh, to start off this podcast. And uh, we're talking about picking up a Jace case. And the Jace case provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use. Uh, All it takes to get a Jace case is fill out a simple online form. And in some cases, jump on a quick call with one of the board certified physicians. You can get ongoing care from those physicians on any treatment-related questions. And uh, the product is doctor created and doctor recommended. Uh, everyone should be empowered to care for themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected and maybe when it's uh, traveling and you don't have the ability to go to a doctor. I've just been in the US, got back a couple of hours ago. I know what you're thinking, feeling pretty fresh. I'm surprised as well. But that's why Jace Medical offers the Jace case. The Jace case provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use and gives you peace of mind so that you're not just hoping you have access to medication in an emergency. Save more than 360 bucks by getting these life-saving antibiotics with Jace Medical plus an additional 20 bucks off by using the code locked on at checkout on jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. And don't forget to use the promo code locked on. Adrian Griffin, someone that we haven't heard a lot from, and we've tried to read a little bit into some of his quotes throughout, whether it was at the introductory press conference or perhaps at the Bucks Golf Day, where all of a sudden all the reporters are lurking uh, like they tend to do and they want to ask him about Giannis. So uh, I'm going from the athletic article, as we uh, generally like to do when it comes to the Bucks and our friend Eric Name. So one of the quotes that was said to a bunch of reporters from Adrian Griffin, Giannis and I are on the same page. We have a great relationship thus far. He's been pleasant to get to know. He wants to win. I want to win. It's that simple. So I respect him and I respect what he's accomplished in this league and we're here to win together. So I have no problem with that. It's a great partnership and we're going to lead the team together. Okay, well, first of all, that quote, it's fine, but that's exactly what he was going to say from the start. But I I was thinking about this big picture and I can't read Adrian Griffin's mind. He might actually feel that way because to be honest, we've discussed it. That's how I feel about Giannis saying this stuff. I actually don't care. Like he's going to be in the news the whole time. I couldn't care less about Giannis saying this stuff. But the idea of a brand new coach now walking into this microscope is going to be interesting. And I think this does fuel at least my belief that you know you want to get off to a decent start here and keep things ticking along because if you don't, that's when the pressure could really start to heat up. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't envy Adrian Griffin and the fact that he's going to have to answer questions like this probably um, throughout the year. Uh, again, I, I watched the video of, of, of the answer. I was kind of chuckling as you were reading it off. I mean, for some reason that referring to Giannis as pleasant to work with, just kind of like <laughs> just thought was the most funny. Oh, he's pleasant. Like we're really well. Um, but I mean, again, what, what else is he going to say? Right. Um, you know, yeah. Adrian Griffin, Obviously, a, a big appeal of this job was you get to work with Giannis. You have a chance to compete for an NBA title if you do this right. And so, yeah, they're aligned, of course, right? And, you know, again, if uh, if he continues to get questions about this, it's probably going to get pretty repetitive and pretty boring because we kind of know know the script from here on out. But, um, but yeah, I mean, again, this is uh, this holds regardless of anything that Giannis has said or hasn't. Um, but this was always going to be a high pressure job. This was always going to be a uniquely high pressure job because you're inheriting a roster that won a championship two years ago. And you've got obviously a guy in Giannis um, who has, if he's not the best player in the world now, he's been that guy very recently and um, has shown he's one of, you know, maybe a handful of players in the entire league that can be you know, truly the best player on a, on a championship team. So um, this is what you signed up for. And, you know, as I've said, I don't think Giannis has done Adrian Griffin any favors by, uh, you know, making the comments that certainly seem like they are at least, uh, if not, you know, to some extent stating the obvious, keeping pressure on the organization, you know, I think viewed slightly alternatively kind of opening, beginning to open the door and preparing people for a potential future in which he doesn't want to play in Milwaukee anymore. 
but uh, it doesn't change the job, right? Adrian Griffin's job was always to win right away. And again, this is this kind of brings back the risk. Like we've said it, Giannis is going to be year to year from here on out pretty much, whether he signs you know a long-term contract a year from now or not. Uh, the microscope is going to be on the Bucks, and you know their ability to compete for a championship with Giannis. And if it seems like they're going in the wrong direction, then everybody's going to ask, are they doing enough? Are they good enough? Should Giannis, you know, would he be better served going somewhere else? And he he's now saying that in the the podcast again. He said again, basically like it's all about winning, you know, and and certainly prioritizing winning over. Uh, longevity with one team and and his and his loyalty to Milwaukee which is his prerogative right and um so really we don't we don't know what that really is going to mean until we sort of see the next year play out and so um so yeah it's it's pressure on Adrian Griffin but it was always going to be pressure on Adrian Griffin I don't, I don't know that it changes that much other than just really the annoyance factor um but yeah I mean you don't you don't have a year to just sort of screw around and figure out how to be an NBA head coach right um if if he can't, you know, basically run the ship and get them competing at the highest level, it doesn't mean necessarily they has to win a championship in year one. But um, you know, another second round out, God forbid, a first round out, that's going to be pretty tough to swallow, right? And I don't, I, I think he's much better prepared for this than you know Joe Mazzulla, right? But I think that Celtics run, I mean, you can't help but look back at. Boston, even getting as far as they did, I mean, almost going to the NBA Finals, um, it felt like, I don't want to say they punted on a championship or or another Finals berth because they gave Joe Mazzulla the reins. Um, obviously, it was a very weird situation, but um, this is the risk you have with an inexperienced head coach. And so hopefully Adrian Griffin does not fall into that trap. He's been part of a, t- a, a staff that's won a championship in 2019 in Toronto. So hopefully he taps into that and the, a new voice, fresh voice mixed with obviously an experienced assistant staff. Hopefully that mitigates whatever lack of experience that, that he might have. Yeah. And certainly at the moment, those questions are easier to answer, as you mentioned, but one of the quotes he did uh, have when he said, he basically said, no, 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 this doesn't add any more pressure. He said, the one thing I've talked to our team and my staff about is embracing expectations. We have a really good roster instead of running from it. We want to embrace it. Then he went on to say that uh, it does take one day at a time, but it's a little bit different to perhaps in the past when it's not... Now, he didn't say it's championship or bust, but he is saying that they're embracing the expectations, which in September is easy to do. If you start the season 8 and 12, maybe then the expectations start to build a lot and then the pressure really builds. So this is September stuff and, and pretty, pretty standard stuff uh, so far from everyone, but... It continues to be pretty fascinating for me. And that's why I am looking at the start for this team and how they all uh, come together. One of the good uh, pieces of news we got was Giannis and Chris Milton uh, seemingly ready for training camp. Uh, That is good news. Both players obviously had uh, little cleanups, they uh, like to say, on their knees. But we'll get to the Milton and Giannis stuff uh, next and any other news uh, around the league that we might want to touch on. But first, FanDuel, uh, another sponsor of today's podcast. Get ready for the NFL season with incredible offers from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And if you're a Packers fan, uh, you would have loved what you saw on the weekend, which brings me to the NFL MVP odds. And uh, look, we don't want to uh, get too carried away, but all I'm saying right now, Jordan Love plus 3,000 for the NFL MVP. And you might be uh, intrigued by those odds. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, obviously uh, the favorite there as well, but you can find out all these odds over at FanDuel. And right now, new customers can bet 5 bucks and get 200 bucks in bonus bets guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Now is the best time to join FanDuel. The app is easy to use, and you can bet on everything from spreads to player props and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with an offer you won't want to miss. That's FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Giannis and Chris Middleton, uh, we've seen some photos. They're working out together. It looks like they're all smiles at the moment, which is nice to see. Training camp, not too far away. Uh, but this is one thing that we don't really know about the Bucks. So at least it is a little bit reassuring to see that the, both of those guys are working out. And it sounds like they're in pretty good shape. Chris Middleton, it was this week. I'm not sure if it's dropped. I've spent the last couple of days traveling, but he was going to be on JJ Reddick's podcast, which 
I, I think would be uh, interesting to listen to. We don't hear a lot uh, from Chris Middleton, but uh, let's face it, Frank, these are the two guys the Bucks need to stay healthy and they do have a question mark on them coming into this season because we don't really get any reports. So if they're healthy and ready to go to start the season, uh, it would mean a lot, particularly because uh, the NBA cracking down on resting. These guys are going to have to play some games. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the the resting rules, I mean, we're not going to kind of go through all the, the nitty gritty details, but um, I, I think I, I would put this this new initiative this new rule from the nba i would say it's kind of similar to other attempts to increase the quality of the regular season um you know alongside the in-season tournament which you know even though it's a new tournament it's using regular season games and trying to make sure that those games take on additional meaning um and and discourages teams from you know obviously resting guys for for tournament game for these in-season in tournament games um you know the the anti-tanking rules or like the flattening of the odds um a number of years ago for the draft lottery i think also just trying to encourage more teams to compete and the play-in tournament kind of similarly right like give teams a, a greater glimmer of hope that you can actually make the playoffs i think you know the the um flattening of the rules and the, and the play in tournament. I mean, I think those have been, well, maybe not successful for the bucks because of the fact that they got bounced in the first round by a team, <laughs> by a heat team that, uh, you know, uh, came in through the play in tournament. But, um, but for the most part, uh, you know, I think those have been just generally like net positives. And I think the in season tournament this year, I don't think there's any reason why it should be bad for, for the sport. Um, and I think similarly here, Sure, why not, right? Let's put some more stringency around these rules. Um, I think the main thing here with the the rest rules, any player that's been an all-star or all NBA player in the previous three years. So for the Bucs, importantly, right, if it was just last year, it would have only applied to Drew and Giannis. Now it applies to Drew, Giannis, and Chris. Um, again, there's limitations on being able to, to rest those guys in nationally televised games and tournament games. Um, and, and again, I mean, the thing is too, the irony here is like, th there's actually been rules around resting guys, uh, since 2017, 18, um, in nationally televised games. Uh, I don't know if that's like the Popovich rule, right? I think people may remember Greg, Greg Popovich sort of famously just sat <laughs> like every, yeah, like every Spurs player, uh, in a nationally televised game. And I don't know how many years ago that was. Um, but I think what we're seeing as well is, I mean, th there are outs to this, right? And so uh, for someone like Giannis or, or Chris coming off knee surgery, like both those guys have sort of like chronic knee problems. Again, like if if they can claim to have, you know, that they're managing a knee injury, things like that, which let's be honest, they kind of always are, um, you know, there's there's more flexibility, there's more outs to rest those guys. I, I, I The main thing I hope is that, with these rules, like I think the thing that just like really kind of was a like a really bad look for the league, other than the national TV games where you had you know star players resting, that's like probably the, the biggest thing that obviously the league has been trying to address for years. Um, but and, and that's where it's most visible, right? Like the casual fan tuning in for a TNT game, a marquee matchup, you know, not seeing key guys out there. Um, but I think my, my hope is that at a minimum, we kind of stamp out these games that you know the bucks have done this under bud right where it's basically like second night of a back-to-back -back. um oftentimes it's against like a bad team or whatever it might be or typically on the road as well and it's just like all right you know what we just you know we've had five <laughs> games and seven nights whatever like we're putting the herd out there right like um probably the most famous one thinking back to that overtime loss in atlanta uh, a few years back when the tim frazier 53 minute game you know those types of games um Bonzi. Bonzi Colson, the legend Bonzi Colson playing 46 minutes and whatever else. Uh, you know, I, I just, I mean, if you're somebody that buys tickets to a game like that, um, or, or even is just like, you know, people like us, people like you guys listening to this, like the people, the diehards, the people, the sickos, right. The people that want to watch every regular season game. Again, sometimes that there's, you know, when you're a sicko, those, there can be some fun watching a game where like all the rant, all these random dudes get to play, but you know, that's not really what the sport's about. And so, Hey, yeah. Are you going to need to rest somebody like Giannis because of his knee for occasionally, um, you know, Chris, same kind of deal. Yeah, sure. Uh, but if we can kind of cut down on just some of the games where tons of guys rest at the same time, uh, that that's obviously probably the most important thing. Flip side is, you know, it's like, well, technically 
you know, if a guy's not an all-star, it's like, then they can theoretically like basically set those guys regardless. Um, so I don't know. It's interesting. I think it's kind of on the one hand, it can't hurt. Um, and I think it's just going to be interesting to see how teams actually kind of, you know, address this. I think to be honest, the, the, the thing that I just kind of keep coming back to, and I've, I've been asking around for a couple of weeks, if anybody can find a reason not to do this, and I have not heard anybody really offer up a reason, um, all of this really comes back to the number of back-to-backs, right? I think the number of back-to-backs went up by about one for most teams due to the end season tournament. I think what there's about an average, I think about 14 back-to-backs for teams this year. Just extend the, extend the regular season. Don't extend the number of games, extend the length of the regular season by two weeks. Again, maybe you're not going to be able to knock out all of the back-to-backs, but I mean, if you had a, a year where you had I'm making this up four or five back-to-backs, and you start the regular season maybe a few days early. You extend the um, the regular season a week, or you just expend the regular season by two weeks or something like that. Um, I mean, who, who has a strong aversion to this, right? Like, are people going to be mad if if basketball goes to to mid June rather than early June? You know, okay, fine, we can move the draft, you know, a week we can move for agency a week, right? Like th- these aren't like really big problematic things for the league. And I think, again, just cutting down of them or back to backs that that's the fundamental thing that's driving this rest typically. Um, so just get rid of it, right? Like just add some, you know, add some time to the front or back end, back end may be easier given that you don't want to compete with football in the fall. I, I can't think of a, a compelling reason why the league shouldn't do this. I, yes, I get it. You don't want the kind of season running longer and longer and longer. But to me, this is just the easiest way to attack the biggest problem, which is just the number of back-to-back games, which, again, to me is where you're seeing most of these absences in the first place. So hopefully this rest rule helps a little bit, but you know, ultimately it's not that hard to conjure up a, a reason to say a guy's injured. So uh, I have some skepticism as well. I thought going back a few years ago, maybe there was reasons for this and it was uh... – I don't know whether it was lockout or the pandemic. I, I can't remember, but I was a little thrown off when I looked at opening night it was October 24. I was like, didn't it, didn't it creep it down to about October 15, 16 at one point in time? So you wouldn't even need to go later. You could just go a little bit earlier. Now, are the players actually wanting to do that? I'm not sure. They've also extended the all-star break, obviously, you know, over the last decade as well and given them a full week off. So there's reasons why that's the case, but you can start a week earlier, probably. I'm sure they'd have to come to an agreement on that, but If you were telling the players they had to do fewer back-to-backs, maybe you get them on board and maybe that's something that they would be invested in. So I think it's a pretty good point you make there, Frank, uh, as as per usual. And and hey, I mean, you know, you you can take some some out of the preseason even a little bit further, right? I mean, like, is anybody... Three preseason games. Yeah, I mean, when we've had the lockouts, right, and the season started late, I think it it was like, oh, we're going to have like two or three preseason games. Was was anybody like really complaining? I I get that there's some concern about ramping guys up too quickly, but you know, in a lockout, you also have the issue of like, well, you couldn't, you know, you literally couldn't have the players working out with team personnel prior to the lockout resolution. So everything's sort of compressed during a normal NBA calendar. You know, again, like I think you can kind of care for that to, to a certain extent, especially given that it's not like Giannis is playing in a lot of preseason games. I don't think he's played more than two or three preseason games um, in any of the like recent preseason years in, in the first place. Um, so yes, like I, I am, you know, as a, as a sicko, I am excited to see Andre Jackson and Marjan Bochamp and Chris Livingston play preseason basketball, but in the grand scheme of the universe, like that ain't making a big difference, um, in terms of, uh, you know, ticket sales or, or TV, TV, uh, ratings in the preseason. Like nobody cares about that stuff. Although one thing I find funny, Kane is like, you know, talking about trying to cut the NBA preseason to like, you know, three games uh, from whatever it usually is like five, six. Uh, it's funny. I was thinking, I, have you seen the movie Invincible? The movie about uh, Mark, Mark Wahlberg is when he was playing uh, this based on a true story. I don't know when it ended. I don't recall exactly when it ended, but it used to be the, the NFL played six preseason games and 14 regular season games. So 30%, 30% of the games 
were exhibitions that did not count in the standings, which is just kind of like, you know, like how on earth were that many games being played? Um, you know, how did it, how did anybody ever think that that made any sense to play that many exhibition games um, and, and, you know, uh, delay the regular season as, as much as they have. So anyway, it could be worse. We could be watching NFL football in the, in the mid to late seventies came that, I guess that's my, my silver lining here. Well, you made the the great point to start there. If all the players were playing every single preseason game, then I'd buy it, but they're not. So who cares? So anyway, uh, we'll see. You're exactly right, though. We're going to be doing post-game shows for every single preseason game and watching every <laughs> single second of it. So I don't know whether we are the guys that are qualified to talk about this, but uh, that's not save, save us from ourselves, NBA, please. That's right. Take away preseason games. Give us, you know, more nights with our family. Well, Kane, you're you don't have a well, you you, you have you have a family. Well, you don't have you don't a, have a you don't have children or a spouse. I'll 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 put it that way. Frank, we don't, I mean, we know each other very well. You know a lot about me, but we don't need to let everyone in on the fact that I don't have a, a family. <laughs> I don't think this was information we needed to share with the people. <laughs> the YouTube commenters are your family, Kane. I think that's, that's the right. reality. That's, that's your real family. That's your found family. No, you're exactly right. And that's why I, uh, today especially, desperately need some YouTube comments talking about Giannis and Hakeem, <laughs> the pressure on Adrian Griffin, and all these players getting ready for training camp. Maybe some thoughts on the new rules with the NBA. But uh, tomorrow, we're going to podcast again. And we've got some, uh, I don't want to give too much away, but we've got a couple of things to talk about, some news across the league over the last few days, which could relate to the Bucks. So another podcast tomorrow. Uh, I'm back on deck, back in Australia. So we've got to start ramping up this podcast, getting ready uh, for the season so uh, pretty interesting stuff today like i said rate comment subscribe review do all those things that helps the show we'll catch you all tomorrow